This video is made available by the Allegheny College Computer Science Department under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivative Works Version 3.0 license. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use BlueJ along with our Subversion repository to do work in a collaborative manner with one of our classmates. The first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to modify the preferences in BlueJ. In particular, you need to turn on the teamwork controls. So make sure that is checked and say OK. Now once you do that, that's going to enable a new option under the Tools menu. So to get started, you're going to need to create a new project. Now I don't know where you're going to save that, somewhere, somewhere in your file system. You might call this the Pennywise Project. So once you've created the project, we now need to share the project so someone else can actually check it out. So this is the first step. Your username is your username. Your password is given to you. The server type is subversion. The server is on hosting.org. And the repository path is SVN, EDU, Allegheny, CompSci 112F09, username slash BlueJ. So make sure it's subversion and make sure the protocol is HTTP. Now check the connection. If everything is correct, it'll say OK and you can say OK as well. And at that point, your project is uploaded to the remote server. And you'll notice there are three buttons on the left of BlueJ that you can now use if you want, or you can continue to use the menus. So here I'm going to go ahead and create a class. Uh, you may remember from the hint that we needed, you know, that uh, the author recommends we have a coin set class. And we can compile that. And <clears throat> the default class is good to go. Now, I can check the status of my project, and we'll see that both coinset.java and the diagram have been modified. Okay, so what I'm going to want to do, and for some reason things are a little funny on my Mac right now, I'm going to want to commit my addition of this class to the repository. I might do an update first to see did my partner do any work, um, and of course because we're just starting out the answer must be no. But if I go to Tools and Team and Commit to Repository, it's going to say, what do I want to add? And I'm going to commit both the diagram and the file coinset.java. And my next step is to write a commit comment. Your commit comment is a kind of communication. It tells your collaborators what it is that you've done in your code. Um, so it's considered good practice to be fairly specific about what it is you did. Did you modify a particular method? Did you add fields? Did you remove fields? Did you only change comments? What comments and why? These are the kinds of things that you should add to your commit comment. So we click commit, and the code is then uploaded to the remote server. When it's done, we can continue editing our file. So for example here, I'm going to go ahead and erase the default code provided by BlueJ. Compile. And I can once again do another commit. Because anything I fail to commit, my partner will not see. So always remember to commit your work after a major change, or perhaps when you're done working for the day. So we deleted the default code from the class. We say commit, and now another version has been uploaded. And now I can perhaps, if I want, see the project history. And this window will tell me all of the commits against the project. So there's my commit message for commit number four, and there's my commit message for commit number five. And we can filter this based on the user or the file, and close our project. Uh, sorry, and close the project history. So that's it. That's how you create a, a project in BlueJ and how you then share it so other people can use it and interact with it as well.